When we talk about sickle cell, it is an inherited um, genetic disorder um, which affects the red blood cells, the hemoglobin of the blood. Now, the red blood cells are um, a component of the blood that um, helps, especially with transportation of um, oxygen to various parts of the body. Also, it's what makes the blood kind of red in our system. So this problem or this uh, genetic mutation happens with the red blood cells. So what happens is that in the normal red blood cells, they are normally round like a donut shape. They are flexible and they are able to uh, maneuver through smaller blood vessels. Whereas the sickle cell um, hemoglobin, which normally we refer to as the S, it's um, sticky and very rigid. So what happens is that it's not being able, when it gets to the smaller blood vessels, it's not able to maneuver through them. Since they are sticky, they can stick to each other and they, they normally come in the shape of a half moon, mm -hmm. like a C shape, um, like the farm two sickle that is being used. That's where it originally got its name from, the farm two called sickle. So what happens is that when it gets to the smaller blood vessels, sometimes they get stick to each other, they get stuck to each other and because of their nature, they are not being able to go through the smaller blood vessels. Now, what happens is that when it happens, it occludes or blocks that particular blood vessel. So, blood doesn't flow to the other parts of um, the body or where it's supposed to go. So, let's say there's a block at your wrist level. Now, blood is not being able to flow downwards. So, you start having pains and all kinds of things um, 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 at the uh, distal part. So, um, both parents should have a treat or should be a carrier of the sickle cell um, um, gene. So what happens is that, let's say the normal one, we normally um, refer it or refer it to be the A and the um, sickle cell one, we normally refer it to be the S. Now, at least your parents should be a carrier. Now, for a child to be born, a child needs to take um, half of the gene from the mom and half from the dad. The half being from the mom, if the child takes the S part of the mom, that is the treat, mm. and also takes the S part of the dad, if they are, uh, both parents are um, carriers or have treats, the child is going to have a double of it, which it will be the SS. That is when you can see you have sickle cell disease. Um, that, I would say, is very expensive. Now, that comes with um, what you call bone marrow um, transplant. Um, Red blood cells are being produced in the bone marrow. Now, for once there is a mutation or a problem with the bone marrow, for it to produce the red blood cells, the mutated ones, you have to correct that. You have to um, do a transplant to correct that problem. Apart from that, which is very expensive, and even the body can reject it like any other transplant. Mm. You can still go ahead and the body will still reject it. Now, for those... Somebody will say he doesn't want that expensive <laughs> Exactly. It happens. There are transplants that go on and like a, a kidney is being donated or something. The body can reject it one way or the other. Now, apart from that, we have um, management. So, apart from that, you can manage sickle cell disease because the transplant is kind of very expensive. expensive. So, what we do is we manage the crisis. The management will be a lifelong Exactly. A, a lifelong thing. A lifelong. Most people are managing it throughout their life. And what happens is that you are being advised on so many things that you have to do. Now, you have to adhere to um, your um, drug regime or management regime. You have to also um, be sure that you avoid a stream of temperatures, whether it's being hot, too hot or too cold. Samuel Nkrumah, a nurse from the Princess Marie Louise Children's Hospital, explained how a sickle cell can be diagnosed and be identified through laboratory investigation. He also explained that symptoms normally come with pains and a lack of oxygen to the organs which causes the area to diminish with oxygen. An inherited condition, so it can only be diagnosed through laboratory investigation. Okay. So you cannot be, you cannot see any features on a person and say this person has unless you do a lab investigation. Normally we do the either the newborn screening or we do HB electrophoresis. That's after six months for you to know whether this patient has a sickle cell disease or not. Sure. No, please.
unless it could be possible but unless for you to get a definite diagnosis unless you do a laboratory investigation then the symptoms like uh, my brother said one of the main symptoms is that they normally come out with pain when the blood occludes at the joint area they present with pain that's one of the typical signs that they normally come with crisis and it's um, as a result you know the oxygen the blood that goes about goes with oxygen so if it is impaired and if there's impaired means if there's lack of oxygen supply to any of the organs then it, the organs become what um, the area becomes diminished with a result of oxygen so when it affects the eyes you come out with vision problem when it goes into the even if you have a, a, a leg ulcer and you have a sickle cell patient it impairs wound healing so when it goes into the chest also you can also get chest pain or acute chest syndrome you can also get um, liver cirrhosis or your kidney can be enlarged or your liver also can be enlarged mm -hmm. Spl that's what we normally call it splenomegaly the other thing is when the um the sickle cell blood when they break down they form something we call bilirubin and sometimes you see that they have yellowish discoloration What's of that nurse shadrach again said the sickle cell hemoglobin has a lifespan of 10 to 20 days while the normal cell has a lifespan of 100 to 120 days after which the red blood cells of sickle patients break faster which leads to anemia the a which is the normal one normally overshadows the s mm -hmm. And now the S um, um, sickle cell um, hemoglobin have a lifespan of 10 to 20 days, and whereas the normal one have a lifespan of about 120 days. So whereas uh, the normal red blood cells takes about three to four months for it to die, the one of the sickle cell takes 10 to 20 days. So you can see the difference mm -hmm. here: 10 to 20 days as compared to the normal one, 100 to 120 days. That's three to four months. So you tend to have their red blood cells breaking very faster and easily, leading to anemia, what we call anemia in the in the body, meaning there's the low level of blood in your system.